Now, how much would you give to find an NHS dentist? Does a million pounds sound too much? Possibly not. A recent recruitment drive to attract new national health dentists here cost four million pounds and only resulted, we're told, in four new employees. A recruitment drive in the West failed to attract any suitable candidates. I'm joined by Fermanagh and South Tyrone MLA Tommy Gallagher and Donica O'Carolan, Acting Chief Dental Officer. Thank you both uh, for joining us. Uh, Tommy Gallagher, you've raised this issue. You're concerned. You're obviously uh, representing the West, which finds it difficult to get NHS dentists. I mean, what, what are the, the issues you're finding on the ground? Well, there's still a good deal of frustration because people can't get treatment on the NHS. Uh, uh, this is in uh, Northern Ireland, which has the worst dental record in these islands and indeed probably one of the worst in Europe. Uh, I raised this in uh, 2007 in, in June here in the Assembly and then the Minister the following September uh, came up with a funding package. Part of that included the recruitment of salaried dentists more than 18 months ago now and uh, there are still none outside the Northern Board area and they have recruited four. We need a minimum of six. The money's there. It hasn't happened and what I want to know is why is it not happening? OK, uh, well, let's hear from the expert. Uh, thanks for joining us, uh, Donko Carroll. Um, I mean, exactly what is uh, Michael Jimsey's department doing uh, to try and get dentists? Well, can maybe just correct you on one of the figures? It wasn't a £4 million recruitment drive. The £4.4 4 million, which, which the Minister announced in September 2007, was an overall package for funding health service dentistry. The vast majority of that money was spent on additional money for the practice allowance, which, which was for overheads allowance for dentists, and for improving infection control within practices. Um, only a small amount of it was for the salary dentists. The amount we made available at that stage was £400,000, but there was £4.4 million paid out in that uh, uh, particular package. OK, uh, no problem. Well, thanks for the correction in terms of uh, outlining that. But in terms of that money that's sitting there, say, for instance, take the example yep. of the West, is it sort of sitting there in a bank account waiting to be spent, but nobody's taken up the offer of a job? No, if, if the money's not uh, spent on dentistry or on salary dentists, we can recycle it into other parts of dentistry. But to get back to your initial point as to what Michael McGimsey is doing about this, once it became apparent that the recruitment drive for salary dentists was not successful in the West, we then looked at going out for a commercial tender to cover the whole of Northern Ireland and particularly targeted at those towns and cities where access is a problem. Now, the reason we, uh, we went down the recruitment drive to start with uh, for the salary dentist was it was quick. I mean, you can recruit into trust fairly quickly. If you go down the route of a commercial tender, there's a consultation exercise, there's legislative implications, and there's the actual commercial tender. So that takes a long time. And we're almost complete on that process now. The tender closed on the 7th of January. We're evaluating those tenders and we hope to award the contract at the end of March 2009. What is it that's holding people back uh, from, say, taking up an offer of a salary job uh, under the NHS anywhere in Northern Ireland? Well, I think the, the main difference would be that the income in independent practice is a lot higher uh, than we would pay through salary jobs. OK, so it's straightforward uh, economics, uh, Tommy Gallagher. These people can earn more money in the private sector. Well, uh, it's not straightforward finding a dentist for those who need one out there, uh, particularly in the West. And we now have inequalities in the health service. And I'm sure Donoghue and, and the Minister and everybody would agree that's the last thing we want. But because this initiative hasn't worked properly, uh, as I've said earlier, if you live over in Antrim, you can get NHS treatment somehow or other, but you have no chance if you're living in the West, and we need that addressed very quickly now. Well, Sorry. the point just picking up on that, what I would say is well, we're going for 38 dentists, health service dentists, into these access black spots. The majority of them are going into the West of the province, so six in Enniskillen, four in Derry, two in Oma, two in Straban. So the West, even though it has a smaller population, is getting disproportionately more of these dentists, which is absolutely right to pick up the points that Tommy has made, that there, there is particular access problems so in the they, West. Sorry, sorry, are they getting more dentists in the West? You, because, mm -hmm. Is the demand higher? Are people coming from, I understand, from across the border to use the dentists? Is, is that an issue? That is an element, um, but it has always been traditionally difficult to, to recruit into the West of Northern Ireland. I mean, I worked in the West for 15 years. I know what it's like. And there just has always been a reluctance of dentists to move. If they're not from that particular part of the world, they tend to want to set up in the east mm -hmm. of the province. Is there any way you can kind of tie the education of dentists to working for the NHS? You know? Yes, we, we have looked at that, and the answer to that is, is that legally it's extremely difficult to do. The only way um, to tie their education um, to delivering health service dentistry is to keep them in a training post. 
Mm. And if you keep them in training posts, that has cost implications as well. At some stage, they have to be able to go out into the independent sector. I think the answer is to make the um, dental contract attractive for dentists to want to come into it. Um, and that is what we're working in the new dental contract working towards. Well, just on that question about tying their education, I mean, it, it is something that uh, a lot of people uh, resent, the fact mm. that uh, the NHS effectively, or the tax favour maybe, mm -hmm. maybe through the uh, education system, spends a fortune, uh, disproportionately more, say, for training a dentist than for doing somebody doing an yeah, English yeah. language or a yeah, law degree. Right, and yeah. then within uh, a year or two, they're off in private practice and all of that money that the taxpayers have paid for disappears. Mm -hmm. Uh, surely, if it's not an issue for Stormont, then it is something someone should speak to Westminster about as to how that should be tackled. Yeah, we are very, very aware of that issue. And that's why with the new dental contract, um, we will have more control over where dentists locate and who they treat. It will not be as easy for people just to, to move out of the health service. Um, whereas with the current contract, there's very little control over where dentists locate and who they treat. So, so that's the fundamental part. And the Minister has been very, very uh, particular on that point, um, that the new contract doesn't leave us in that situation, that we are training up people, and then they're able to walk into the, the private sector. OK, well, yeah. thanks for joining us. Uh, uh, we'll have to leave it there, but uh, okay. we'll keep an eye out uh, for this uh, new contract to be awarded. No doubt, Tommy Gallagher, you'll keep us uh, updated if it isn't working. Thank you both very much indeed.